All right, here we go. Welcome to day one. Um, hopefully you guys did fine on that review. Uh, make sure you turn that homework into uh, Teams. I'll give you credit for it. Uh, we are moving on back to Chapter 11. Chapter 11 is kind of weird in the sense that we start with stuff that literally is more 7th and 8th grade stuff. Changing fractions to decimals, that sort of thing. Uh, what we did on 11.1. Then 11.2 is also, most of it is a repeat of stuff that you should have learned in 7th uh, and 8th grade. But we'll take it as it comes. No big deal. Uh, I don't have the calendar updated. We're just going to run right through 11.2. If you look down here after the three-day weekend uh, here at the bottom here, uh, where it says we'll do chapter 11 and uh, review, uh, that's where we're actually going to be taking the PSAT test. Uh, so we will finish with uh, chapter 11 as everything goes fine. We will finish by Friday of next weekend, including doing a couple reviews. We'll have to see how the chapter 11 test shakes out. I don't know if I'll do um, um, uh, another review or we'll just see how it, how it works out. Uh, but here is your homework for tonight, two through 26 evens. And then we'll get started. Like I said, uh, there's technically not a single thing new that I will show you. For those of you that didn't have me in as an Algebra 1 teacher, that you have not been exposed uh, probably to converting uh, repeating decimals into fractions. That would probably for uh, for the new kids that will be the brand new stuff that you may not may, maybe you had a good teacher they showed it to you before maybe not for my kids that I had is uh, uh, in pre-algebra last year you've seen this before uh, certainly you might have forgotten how to do it but it should but it will be a review of what we did last year changing repeating decimals into fractions and that is the one challenging thing uh, I'll have this video posted probably not until three o'clock today. So if you are doing your homework and you get to one of those repeating decimal ones and you're like, oh, I forgot how to do it, and the book doesn't make any sense, then you'll have to wait until I post the video, and then it'll walk you through step by step. It's not too bad. A few steps, though. All right, here we go. So we're going to pick up where we left off. 11.1 was uh, uh, the introduction to rational numbers. Numbers can be written as a ratio or a fraction. And then now we're going to include our decimal forms as well, too. All right. Uh, rational numbers are simply numbers that can be written as a, a ratio, a big fancy word for fraction. Remember, if you have a fraction, the bottom number cannot be zero. You can't have any decimal numbers into either the numerator or the denominator. But any number that can be written as a rational number, we, we determine or we give them the name rational number. Well, if you haven't figured this out so far, you haven't been paying attention, but it turns out uh, that decimals are fractions, and fractions are decimals. They're the same thing, just written in two different forms. Uh, 0.5 is the same as 1 half. Both of these are equivalent. What's on the left is exactly the same as what's on the right. Now, clearly, different form, but decimals can be written as fractions, and fractions can be written as decimals. That's what today's class is all about. All right, so both of these are rational numbers. So the first thing we'll do is we'll change fractions to decimals. It's the easier of the two. We're going to change fractions to decimal. Changing decimals to fractions can be a bit complicated if there's a repeating decimal. So let's write down a few vocabulary words first to get started. So remember, we're talking about decimals. And the first type of a decimal, and the reason why I have the terminator there, is because the first type of decimal is called a terminating decimal. A terminating decimal is a decimal number that, uh, well, if you do the division that turns that rational number, the fraction into a decimal, that you eventually get to a remainder of zero. In other words, the decimals stop. They don't continue on forever, like pi or like a repeating decimal, okay? They stop. Uh, some examples, well, here's a rational number, 12 over three. And if we do that division, 12 divided by three, we get four. Remember to turn a fraction into a decimal, divide the top number, the numerator, by the bottom number, the denominator. So 12 divided by 3 is 4, and there's no more decimals after 4. It's just a plain old number 4. So 4 is a terminating decimal. Here's one a bit more comfortable, right? 1 divided by 4. Well, one goes, or 4 goes into 1 0.25 times. Uh, we eventually get to a division part where the remainder was 0. That last number right there, when we divide and we get that five, we got a remainder of zero. And I, I literally mean when we divide four into one, eventually the division stops. It doesn't go 0.255555 or 
an uh, 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 irrational number like pi, where the number goes on forever and never stops. This, these stop. They're called terminating. All right, not not ninth grade stuff, but just to recall, that's how we uh, define a terminating decimal. So to turn a fraction into a decimal, we divide the numerator, in this case, one by five, one by five. Remember, uh, if you had me last year, I talked about chopping the tree down. If you think of one fifth as a fraction and you chop it down and it falls to the right, right is correct, right is correct, then what would fall on the inside of the long division symbol would be the one, and what would stay on the outside is a five. This is the number one mistake made by both middle school and high school students. You put the wrong number on the inside. So one goes on the inside, five goes on the outside, and you do the long division algorithm, all right? So we have a decimal place. I always move it immediately to the top. Uh, five doesn't go into one, but we add a zero. Five does go into 10 two times. So final answer, remember, we got a remainder of zero. That means it terminates. We have a final answer. The quotient of one and five is 0 0.2. We put that leading zero there simply to help the reader of our answer know that it is a decimal number. If we were just put 0.2 and your point is very small, maybe they might confuse it and not think that the, uh, the answer was, was 0.2. All right, I'm doing something here for a second. I just remembered something. If you've asked any question up to now, I didn't have my audio turned on to hear your question, so I apologize. So let me get back to where I left off. There we go. All right, terminating decimals, not bad at all. So uh, game number one today is I give you a fraction, you turn it into a decimal number. All right, so here's the two that I'll give you for practice right here. Uh, let's see, negative seven tenths. Now, obviously, uh, the negative is going to come into play. The answer will be negative on the first one. The answer will be positive on the second one right there. So when you have uh, to deal with a negative number, just ignore the negative until the very end and then just attach a negative to the answer. Seven divided by negative 10 is negative or negative seven divided by positive 10 is negative. We chop the tree down. The tree falls to the right. So what falls on the inside is the 7. What falls on the outside is the 10. Notice I'm ignoring the negative. We'll just attach a negative to the answer. Uh, put the decimal where it needs to go. Move it immediately to the top. 10 doesn't go into 7, so we add a 0. 10 goes into 70 7 times. 7 times 10 is 70. We get a remainder of 0. Life is good to us. Uh, so the final answer is negative. Notice I add the negative now, negative 0 0.7. Any questions so far? Shouldn't be. This is just a review. All right. Uh, well, let's see. The second one, uh, chop the tree down. It falls to the right. So what falls to the inside is the 5. What falls on the outside is the 8. Uh, we add our decimal, move it immediately to the top. 8 doesn't go into 5, so we add a 0. 8 goes into 50. Let's see, 8, 16, 24, 32, 40, 48. So it goes 6 times. 6 times 8 is 48. We do our subtraction. We get a 2. Add a 0. 8 goes into 20. What, 8, 16, 2 times. 8 times 2 is 16. Subtract. Let's see, is this one going to terminate? We get a 4. We add a 0 again. Oh, yes, this one terminates. 8, 16, 24, 32, 40. So five times we get a remainder of zero. So final answer, the quotient is uh, 0 0.625. There we go. You'll have a few of these for homework. I can't guarantee you they're fun, but, uh, well, that's the process. Any questions? All right. Uh, how do we change mixed numbers into decimals? Uh, there's a couple ways of doing it. One way is to turn this into an improper fraction and then just do the math there. So let's see. To turn this into an improper fraction, remember, we take the 8. Oops. We take the 8. We multiply by 1. 8 times 1 is 8. We add that result to the numerator. 8 times 1 is 8 plus 7 is 15. And all over the original denominator, 8. So that is what you would do the division with. Chop that one down. I'm not going to do the long division here. That's one technique, okay, one technique. So remember, when you change a mixed number to an improper fraction, it's the bottom, right, times the whole number added to the top all over the bottom number. So denominator times whole number. It could be an integer. It could be a negative as well. Uh, but we ignore the negative until the very end, uh, plus the numerator all over the denominator. 
So 15 over 8, if we were to divide, chop that one down, divide 8 in the 15, it goes 1.875 times. Okay, I'm, I'm ignoring the long division here for the, just this example. The second method of doing this is to do as following. Notice that the original whole number was 1, and notice on our answer, the original number to the left of the decimal place is also a 1. So the second technique, probably more used more than often, the second technique is simply to take the fraction and to turn that into a decimal. And it turns out if you divide 8 into 7, you get 0.875. So the second more commonly used technique to change a mixed number into a, fra a decimal is to, uh, I'll do this one more time, is to take the whole number here, which in this case is 1, put it out front, and then take the fraction, 7 eighths, and turn that into a decimal. That one saves you a bit more steps, and it, it's more efficient, certainly. Either technique, is, either technique works. I'll let you choose which one you like to use best. All right, any questions on that? Like I said, today's class is a whole bunch of review. All right, so let's do one together, 3 and 3 tenths. There's two techniques. Either turn it into an improper fraction and then do division, or... Take the whole number, turn the fraction. So I'm going to choose option number two. Let's see, option number two, uh, we immediately take the whole number, in this case three, we write three, point. And then we take this fraction right here and turn it into a decimal. Chop it down. Top falls on the inside. The denominator stays on the outside. Put my decimal place, move it immediately to the top. Uh, 10 doesn't go into 3, so I put a 0, add a 0. 10 goes into 30 three times, so I get 0 0.3. In other words, I put a 3 right here, and I'm done. Okay, 3 times 10 is 30. I forgot to do the subtraction. We get a remainder of 0. I like that technique. I'll show you the other technique. We'll still get 3.3. 3. Uh, the second technique, or technically it was the first technique I showed you, was to turn that into an improper fraction. 3 times 10 is, I'm sorry, 10 times 3 is 30, plus 3, 33 over 10. And then I chop that tree down, and I'm dividing 10 into 33. 10 goes into 33 three times. Notice I moved my decimal place first. 3 times 10 is 30. Subtract, add a 0, and notice we still get 3.3. Either method works. I like that first way I showed you better than this way, but this method works as well, too. People get accustomed to just, hey, anytime I see a mixed number, change it to an improper fraction. So a lot of times, kids will just immediately move it into an improper fraction. It's fine. It works. All right. One more time. Notice it's negative, so our answer is going to be a negative. Ignore the negative until the very end. If I use my favorite technique right here, let's see, it would be negative 2, so I'm going to write negative 2 point, and then I'm going to convert this part into a decimal. We chop the tree down, 9 falls on the inside, 15 on the outside. Put a decimal, move it immediately to the top. 15 doesn't go into 9, or it goes 0 times, add a 0. 15 goes into 90. Ooh, I know 15 goes into 60 four times. And 15 goes into 30. So two more than that would give me, uh, let's see, that would give me, what, six times? Is that right? Yeah, six times. Why are you not writing? Six times. So I get 0.6. So I add a 0.6 right there, and I'm done. You want to do it the other way? No, the other way is make it into an improper fraction. Do the long division, and sorry for that being in the way, but you still get 2.6, in other words, negative 2.6. Oh, boy, is that messy. All right, there's a bit, a bit nicer. Whichever way floats your boat, go ahead and choose that one. Uh, obviously, the only one you're not supposed to use is the calculator method, right, unless it's a test with a calculator, which our test will not be with a calculator. So you got to make sure you can do this by hand. All right, we good to go? Any questions? Running through this pretty quickly. It is review. Oh, finally, done with the first one of four things. All right, let's get on to the second type of fractions. Write this down, please, in your notes. There's fraction decimal, sorry. The second type is a repeating decimal. Now that's when you, well, you do the division. You're turning that fraction into a decimal. And then all of a sudden, you just get the number over and over and over again, and it repeats itself. 
In other words, you don't get a remainder of zero. You keep getting uh, an additional number. So, for instance, 0.333333, those dot, dot, dot is the ellipses uh, that indicates that the number that's being repeated is three. Uh, it turns out that one third. If you turn that into a decimal is, well, 3 goes into 10 three times with one left over. 3 goes into 10 one time with three left over. 3 goes into, I'm sorry, three times. Why did I say one time? 3 goes into 10 three times with one left over, and it just repeats over and over and over again. It's like you never make any progress. Uh, you guys have seen this before plenty of times. Uh, this is not the preferred way of writing a repeating decimal. The preferred way of writing a repeating decimal is the BAR, B-A-R method. And the bar method is you put the bar, or the little line, over the number that is repeating. Sometimes there's one number repeats. Sometimes there's two numbers, or three, or even four numbers that repeats. You put the bar over the number that repeats. So 0.3 is way, 0.3 repeating is how we would read that. It's way easier to write than 0.333 dot, dot, dot. Repeating decimals. Here's one that looks like it wouldn't be repeating. It actually is. If you divide 6 into 5, you get an 8 and then a whole bunch of 3s that repeat. So notice the 8 isn't repeating. It's the 3 that's repeating. So when we write this in bar form, B-A-R form, uh, then I don't put the bar over the 8. I put the bar over just the 3. So that's telling the reader that 8 isn't repeated, but 3 is being repeated over and over and over again. Questions? Okay, let's do a couple. Let's see, two-thirds, written as a decimal. Uh, well, it's not an improper or mixed number, so I just simply go right to the division. I go right to the division. Uh, uh, I guess I skipped that part. If I go right to the division, I'll do it for you over here. Uh, we chop the tree down, so let's see, three, two falls on the inside, three on the outside. Add my decimal place immediately to the top. Uh, 3 doesn't go into 2, add a 0. 3 goes into 20 six times. 6 times 3 is 18. Subtract, and notice that we get, immediately get a 2 again. So we started with a 2, we wind up with a 2. I don't care how many times you do this. Every time you add a 0, right, it turns, into goes six, turns out that it goes in 6 times. Every single time you do this subtraction, every time you do this subtraction, you get a remainder of 2. And this is where the 0 .666666 re repeating comes from. Uh, we prefer to write this in bar form. In bar form, it would be 0 .6 repeating. Okay. Repeating decimals, repeating decimals. Not hard to turn a fraction into a repeating decimal. Turning a repeating decimal back into a fraction is going to require a little bit of some work. We'll do that as our last thing. All right. Let's see what else. Uh... Let's see, 11 fifteenths. Now, one way of doing this would be to immediately to convert this into a mixed number if you wanted to. Let's see, 11 goes into 15 one time with four left over, so four elevenths. So to turn that into a decimal, right, we know that that would be one point something. Uh, four into 11, chop the tree down. 11's on the outside, four is on the inside. Add a decimal, move it to the top, add a zero, 11 goes into 40, four zero, three times. So that would be what, 33 with a seven. Okay, it doesn't look like it's repeating. Maybe it's going to work. We'll see. Uh, add a zero, 11 goes into 76 times. That'd be 66. Ooh, maybe it's going to work. I probably should have given myself some more space. A four, add a zero. Uh, oh, 11 goes, oh, here we go, repeat, we go back to our 3, and if we continue, we get another 6, and we get another 3, and then another 6, so it looks like what's repeating is the 3 and the 6, so the bar goes over the top. There's one way of doing it. Uh, the other way is just literally divide 11 into 15. Either way works. You can pick either one. It doesn't matter. Uh, you could argue that uh, the way that I just showed you was a little bit easier but it's not by much, right? Uh, if you divide that in, into that, it, 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 it's just as easy, I think. Some people simply say, hey, but I'm dividing 11 into 4 rather than 11 into 15. I don't think it saves that much time for this one. The previous method, I agree it does, but uh, for this one, they give you an improper fraction. I think it would take you longer to turn into a mixed number first. 
Plus, you could make a mistake on that step as well, too. So I would just probably just divide 11 into 15. All right, let's do this one together. Uh, let's see, 7 into 9, 7 into 9. A little scratch work. Uh, 9 into 7, I'm sorry, I chopped it down wrong. So we chop it down, what fall on the top falls to the inside, uh, the bottom stays on the outside, 9 into 7. Well, 9 doesn't go into 7, so move the decimal place up, add a 0. 9 into 70, let's see, 9 times 7, 63. Oh, and look, we get a 7 remainder, so we're getting a 7 again. So you can tell that we're just going to get 0. 0.777777. So final answer, oh, I actually did this one, uh, 0. 0.7 repeating, 0. 0.7 repeating. How many times do you need to do the, uh, the uh, division before you see that it's repeating? Well, enough until you can determine definitively that it is repeating. Okay. Questions? Okay, so what changes when the fraction is negative? Nothing. It just means the answer is going to be negative. We still do this the same process. We take the fraction, we chop it down, we do the long division. Notice I'm ignoring the fact the answer will be negative. Move the decimal place right to the top. 9 doesn't go into 5, but it does go into 50. What, 5 times? 45? Yeah, 45. Ooh, look, remainder 5. We're back to where we started from. We just get a string of fives, one after the other. How many times do we have to do this? At least until you can uh, def def definitively convince yourself that we're getting the same remainder over and over and over again. As soon as that's done, you can write this in repeating or bar form. Uh, remember, this one was negative. Why? Uh, because it was negative to start with. I should put a negative on this, 0.5555. Technically, that's wrong without the negative. Uh, final answer here is though correct in yellow. That is the correct final answer. Questions? Okay, we got two things left. We're making good progress here. Two things left. Two things left. All right, the second game that we're going to play is, okay, this one is not as much fun as the first one. I'm going to give you a mixture of decimals and fractions, positive and negative. And they're going to ask you to put them in order from least to greatest. Be careful occasionally, maybe not for homework, but occasionally I've seen on test. You're expecting them to always say, put the numbers in from least to greatest. And boy, can they mess with you if, a, if they say, put them in order from greatest to least. I've seen that done, uh, but not very often. Most of the time, it's always least to greatest. All right. So game number two is they're going to give you, look, we got four numbers there, some fractions, some decimals. And they ask you to put them in order from least to greatest. Notice I have two negatives and two positives. Well, obviously, the negatives are smaller than the positives, but that doesn't help us much uh, because there's multiple. If there's only one negative number, clearly that would be the smallest one. If there's only one positive number, clearly that would be the biggest one. So sometimes you may be able to help yourself, but this is not one of them. All right, so let's see how we can do this. There's two ways of doing this. Method number one would be convert all of those fractions into decimals. Method number two would be convert all the decimals into fractions. So those are your two techniques. Method number one, change them all to fractions. Method number two, change them all to decimals. It turns out that the easiest method, uh, because if you change them all to fractions, we would also have to get common denominators. The easiest method is to change them all into decimals. So that's what we're going to do. I'm going to take all, well, two of them already are decimals. So I just need to take the two that are fractions, one-fourth and negative three-fifths, and change those into decimals. So scratch work off to the side, one-fourth. Some of you have that memorized. One-fourth is 0.25. And it turns out that negative three-fifths, five goes into 36 times. So what five would go into three, zero, five goes into 30, so 0.6. So negative 0.6. All I did was convert those two fractions, one-fourth into 0 0.25 and negative three-fifths into negative 0 0.6. Now, that might take a lot of scratch work. It might take a little, depending upon how many fractions you have. Okay, step number two would be to, well, what's the smallest number there? Be careful. Remember, for negative numbers, as the number gets bigger, its value gets smaller. So we want the largest negative number there, because it would have the smallest value, and that would be negative 0 0.6 or negative 0 0.6. 
So we know now that these two numbers right here are the smallest number of the four. When you write them as your final answer, I guess you could put negative 0 0.6. You check the back of the book for how they do it. They always put the original number as the first number. So the original number was negative 3 fifths. I would not mark it wrong if you put negative 0 0.6 as your smallest. But in red there is the smallest number. That would mean that the next one would be, the next biggest one would be the, uh, let's see, it would be the this one. So that would come second. And then lastly, let's see, which one is the next biggest? It would be I need a different color. Um, it would be this one. And then the last number clearly would be, uh, I'll use purple here, it would be this number. I think that's purple. Now we're simply going to write them from least to greatest. So let's see, we went red, blue, green, purple. So red, blue, green, purple would look like this. Notice I used the original numbers. All right, those are, well, I guess they're fun for some people, but for a lot of people, that's just a lot of work. Uh, so do your best. I didn't give you 20 of these tonight for homework, so don't panic. Questions on that? Could I change them all into fractions? You sure could, but then you would have to get common denominators in order to compare them. So we find it easier to convert them all to decimals. All right, so we're not going to do any examples of that. You know, it's pretty self-explanatory. The... Uh, the last game, uh, it's going to come in two flavors. The last game is to change decimals to fractions. Half of them are easy and half of them are a bit more challenging. We'll spend time on the more challenging ones. But half of them are pretty easy, and most of you know how to do this already. All right, I'm going to uh, post the video by 3 o'clock. I can't, well, actually, it's lunch next, so I could post the, I'll post this immediately after class. So give me about five minutes after class, and the video will be posted. You probably can do all your fractions to decimals pretty easy, but you might need to, to remember how to do this. So it, it would help to have the video playing while you do your homework. So um, although I'm, I'm, I'm talking while I would like you to write down these steps, um, remember it will be on the video. You can review the video, put it on pause, and, and write it down. Okay, so the steps, if I give you a terminating decimal and you need to turn it into a fraction, or step number one, you rewrite the numbers to the left of the decimal. Write the number to the right of the decimal as the numerator. Uh, the denominator is the number one followed by the number of zeros as decimal places reduced. Wow. Sounds really complicated. If you've never done this before, uh, I'm not going to go over each individual step right here without actually doing one. I think it's a little bit easier if I show you an example than to just some read some words to you. So like I said, I'll have the video posted after class here. Um, you can have it plain or at least to write down the steps if you need them. So here's the example. I need to turn 1.25 into a fraction. Uh, I'm following these steps because it is a terminating decimal. Notice the decimals don't continue on. There's no bar over the top. Uh, so it terminates, and it says, step number one, rewrite the numbers to the left of the decimal place. So what number is to the left of the decimal place? There's a one, so I rewrite one. I, I literally put a one. Step number two, it says, write the numbers to the right W-R-I-T-E, write the numbers to the right, R-I-G-H-T, write the numbers to the right of the decimal place as the numerator of your fraction. So the numbers to the right are 2 and 5. So 2, 5 becomes the numerator. And step number 3 says write a 1 followed by how many zeros as you have decimal places. I have two decimal places, so I have two zeros. The other way of thinking about this is to look at the last decimal place, not the first, but the last decimal place, and ask yourself, what's its place value? The 5 is in the hundredths place, which is why we write 100. So you can either can use step 3 or look at the last number, the last number as a decimal, and what place value it is. That becomes the denominator. Okay? You did, you've done this before. Uh, very, very, very last step, though, is reduce. So we reduce 25 over 100. Uh, let's see, 25 goes into both of these numbers. 25 goes into 25 once. 25 goes into 104 times, so one and a quarter, one and a quarter. We probably need to see this a few more times, so let's do a few more of these. All right, a few more times. All right, 1.75, 1.75. Step number one, we look at the numbers to the left of the decimal place, and we rewrite them. Whether they're positive or negative, we just rewrite them. Step number two. The numbers to the right of the decimal place, that's the 7 and the 5, become the numerator. 
And the denominator is a one followed by how many zeros there by how many decimal places? Two decimal places, two zeros. Or five is in the hundreds place, so it would be over a hundred. Either one works. Reduce. What number goes into 75 and 125? Well, we already said 25 goes into 104 times. How many times does 25 go into 75? Three times. So we get one and three-fourths. And that's how they're done. That's how terminating decimals are done. One more time. 2.3. The number to the left of the decimal place goes out front. The number to the right of the decimal place goes on the top. And the denominator, well, is a 1 followed by how many zeros there are in decimal places. There's one decimal place for one zero. Or 3 is in the tenths place. So 3 over 10. Either one works. Some people who have problems knowing their place values might want to think about adding zeros. For those of you that know your place values, just look at its place value. 3 tenths can't be reduced, so that's the final answer. 2 and 3 tenths. Hey, notice it literally as you read this, 2 and 3 tenths is how you read this right here, 2 and 3 tenths. All right, that's not a coincidence. That's by design. All right, I got three of them to do. Remember, negatives, we just tacked the negative on at the very end. So let's do these. All right, let's see. The first one, the number to the left goes out front. The number to the right goes on top. The numerator and the denominator is its place value or one followed by how many zeros as there are decimal place, one decimal place, one zero, or the two is in the tenths place. So I get one and two tenths. Reduce, uh, that would be one, two goes into both of those, two goes into two once, two goes into ten, five times, one and one-fifth. Done. Second one, hey, there's no number to the left. Well, it's a zero. So if there's no number to the left, you don't put a zero, you just leave it blank. The number to the right is the numerator, and, well, there's one place value, so 10, or it's in the tenths place, so one-tenth. Okay, that was pretty simple. The last one, number to the left, goes out front, so negative 12. 16 goes on top. Uh, i got two decimal places, so over 100, or 6 is in the hundredths place. Ooh, what goes into 16 and 10? Well, the biggest number, I believe, is 4. I know 4 goes into 100, and I know 4 goes into 16. So let's see. If that's the case, then I would get negative 12. 4 goes into 16 uh, 4 times, and 4 goes into 125 times. And I think that's all that one can be reduced. All right, there are your three answers. Let me put those nice and pretty now rather than sloppy. Ooh, oops, sorry. There you go. Nice and pretty. So it's not that I sped through this to get to the very last thing, but I will say the last thing is the one. I know i got a bunch of new kids this year. This is the one that I don't know if your last math teacher taught you this. So the last thing that we're going to do today is turn a repeating decimal into a fraction. Repeating decimal. So for some of you, this might be new. For others of you, you will remember doing it from last year. Now, do you remember, like literally remember doing it last year? Maybe, maybe not. But we did do this last year. This is messy. The rules are pretty simple. Uh, here are the rules. Uh, I do not want you to write them down right now uh, because they look really weird and they don't make much sense until we actually do some problems. So once again, I said I would post this after class. Um, if you're doing this live, I would just say, hang on, you know, uh, do the problems with me and then maybe play the video to write the steps down later. It's not as bad as it looks, but they definitely, if you were just to read these steps, the book does a really poor job of explaining what they do. Uh, these steps right here explain it really well once you understand what's going on. All right, so most kids are confused the first time they see this. So let's do some examples, and let's see if we can get rid of some confusion. So I need to turn this into a fraction. So here's how it's done. Step number one, do you see the, the original number, 3.6 repeating? Step number one says, let the letter N be that number. So I literally write, there's nothing special about the variable N. It's just the number uh, most math books choose. Uh, we're going to let N be equal to 3.6 repeating. So literally, I take the number, put N equals in front of it, done. That's step one. Anybody can do that step. Step number two is the thinking step. It's weird. 
It says multiply step one by ten times the number uh, to the power of the uh, ten to the num to the power number of repeated decimals. Here's what it means. Look at the original number. How many numbers are underneath the bar symbol? There's only one number. So what it's asking you to do is to take the number ten, put it to the power, and the power is the number of repeated decimals. There's only one repeated decimal, six. If it was 0.67 repeating, then this would be a 2. If it was 0.674, then it would be a 3. Okay. In our case, it's just a 1, or there's one number, so it is just 10 to the first power. Well, what is 10 to the first power? Well, that's 10. So what am I really doing? What I'm really doing is that I'm multiplying this first equation, n equals 3.6 repeated, times 10. And I mean both sides by 10. If I multiply n times 10, I get 10n. And I want you to write the answer above. So I get 10n. Whatever you do to one side, you got to do the other side. So I need to multiply this times 10. Well, what happens when you multiply by 10? When you multiply by 10, that's the same as moving the decimal place once to the right. When you multiply by 10, that's the same as moving the decimal place once to the right. You multiply by 100 twice to the right, by 1,000 three times to the right. Let's think about what this number was originally. Uh, this number originally, lost my cursor, there it is. Um, this number originally was 3.6 repeating. That's a, well, there's a 6, and then there's a 6, and then there's a 6, and there's a 6. It's just a string of 6s. So if we move my decimal place, let me do it a bit neater this time. If I move my decimal place once to the right, well, then it would be, why are you not writing? It would be, once to the right, it would be 3.6 and then a whole bunch of sixes. In other words, another repeating number. So now I'll do it nice and pretty. All I'm doing is multiply both sides by 10, right? It would turn into that. I moved it one place to the right. That makes it 36.6 repeating, right? If I had multiplied by 100, it would be 366.6 repeating. If I multiplied by 1,000, right, it would be what? It would be 3,666.6 repeating, okay? All right. Uh, why are we doing this? Well, you're going to see why in a second some magic is about to occur. Hey, system of equations, two equations. They're not the same equations, they're different equations. System of equations, we can subtract or add. We're going to choose to subtract. So I'm going to subtract. Notice I put the second equation on the top, not the bottom. So when I subtract these two equations, well, let's see, 10n minus n, and remember there's always that hidden 1, right? Remember there's always a hidden 1. 10n minus 1n is, is 9n. But look what happens on the right side. This is the magic. This would just be a whole bunch of sixes, and they would never stop on the bottom. It would be a whole bunch of sixes that never stop. It would just be a string of sixes over and over and over again. When you would subtract them each time, you would get zero. So, in fact, what happens is all of these sixes go away. That's the magic. And 36 minus 3 is 33. Look at that. There's no more repeating decimals. That's the magic of this process. We're going to do a bunch of these. Don't panic. Once you subtract, the last step is to solve. Well, the only thing you got to get rid of is the 9 by division. So it turns out that 3.6 repeated is 33 over 9. We can reduce that by 3. 3 goes into both of these, and we get 11 thirds. If you don't believe me, take your calculators right now and divide 11 by 3, and magically you get 3.66666. You're like, no, i got a 7 on the end. You're all your calculators rounding. Okay? So that is the process of turning a repeating decimal into a fraction. We're going to do a bunch of these. Don't panic. All right. Grab a piece of paper. If you've done nothing to this point and you know you haven't done this process, you need to do this. Okay. So here we go. I need to change 2.3 with the 8 repeating into a fraction. Step number one, we literally... Just let n equal that number. All I'm doing is write n equals in the number. Step number two, I look at the bar. How many numbers are underneath the bar? One. So I'm going to multiply both sides by 10 to the first power. 
If there were two numbers underneath the fraction bar or underneath the uh, repeated bar, there will be in a second. The next one we do, uh, we would multiply by 10 squared or 100. But this time there's only one, so I'm going to multiply both sides by 10. Well, that's cool. Remember, both sides by 10. 10 times n is 10n. If I move the decimal place once to the right, I get 23.8. Can you see that? I'm multiplying both sides by 10. 10 times n is 10n, left side. Right side, when you multiply by 10, you move the decimal place once to the right. So you get 23.8 repeating. Cool. Easy. Here comes the magic. Remember, 0.8 repeating means that there's a whole bunch of 8s. So when we do this subtraction, there's a whole bunch of 8s. I'm not going to write them all this time. But as we go off to the right for both top and bottom numbers, it's just 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8, 8. So when you do that subtraction, when you do the subtraction, well, all of these 8s just go away. There's 8 here, 8 here, 8 here. They all go away and turn into 0, except for this one. 8 minus 3 is 0.5. So we get, after the subtraction, we get 21.5. All the repeated 8s go away. There's no more repeated 8. What we're left with is 21.5. Now we solve this equation. It's always going to be the same. You're always going to be divided either by 9 or 99 or by 999. So we take that number, 21.5, and write it over 9. We can't have decimals in the fraction, so we move things. Let's see. In order to turn that top number, 21.5, into a whole number, we'd have to move it one place to the right. Whatever you do to the top, you do to the bottom. So we would have to move this over once, so we would get 215 over 90. That's what we have to reduce. I'll do the reducing for you real quick. I think 5 goes into both numbers. So 5 goes into uh, 90, 15, or 18 times, uh, and 5 goes into 215, 43 times. If you take your calculator and you divide 43 by 18, you will get 2.38 and the H repeat. You're like, no, I got a 9 on the end. Yeah, it's rounding for you. All right. Like I said, I would highly recommend when you do these repeated ones for homework, have this video playing. Pick the one, either the first example or this example or the next one. Hey, look, we got two numbers that are repeating. Those are the three types that will be tonight for homework. You can play my video while you're doing your homework to help you solve this one. Okay. Step one, it's always let n equal that number. Really easy. Step two, how many numbers are underneath the bar? There's two numbers this time, four and two. So I'm going to write 10 to the second power because there's two numbers. 10 to the second power is 100. So I'm going to multiply both sides of the equations by 100. 100 times n is 100n. If I move the decimal place, I've got to show you this one. If I move the decimal place, I'm multiplying by 100, two places, right? You would still, because 4, 2 repeats, I would get another 4, 2 repeating, okay? Which is why it turns into 42.42 repeating, okay? Okay, all I'm moving is the decimal place twice. Here's the magic. Watch what happens when you subtract. When you subtract, look, the repeating numbers go away. Because this would be 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 2 to infinity, right? Uh, on both the top number or top equation and the bottom equation. But when you subtract, you'd have just nothing but 4s and 2s on top of each other. When you subtract, you get 0. 0 minus 42 is still 42. So now we got rid of our problem, which was repeating decimals. Notice, like I said before, the last step will always be the same thing. You're always going to either be divided by 9 or 999 or 9,999. This time we're dividing by 99, so we get 42 over 99. Does 3 go into that? Uh, yeah, it does. 3 goes into 42 14 times, and 3 goes into 99 33 times. So we get 14 over 33. And as always, if you don't believe me, divide 44 or 14 sorry, by 33. And your calculator, this time it didn't round because, you know, it's not a number bigger than 5, or 5 or bigger. So you get 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2, 4, 2. The first time I was shown this, it was really magical. I mean, it was like, wow, how, who, who in the world came up with that? Somebody smarter than me, but that is how you turn a repeating decimal into a 
fraction. Uh, very forgettable. Um, we'll do this. Uh, you'll be experts at it come test day, and then you will probably immediately forget how to do this, but you will realize that there is a process. Wow, that was a lot of stuff. Uh, the first three things there were it was straight up review. The last thing, for some of you might have been new, for others you maybe not, but for many of you that last part may have been new. Hopefully the kids that I taught pre-algebra remember doing that in pre-algebra. And that this is the second bite of the apple, so to speak. So this is the second time that you got to do this. Uh, hopefully it will become more memorable. All right. Uh, if there's any questions or whatever, like I said, I will post this video. Uh, here's your homework again. Uh, I will post this video as soon as it compiles, so I'll have it up within 10 minutes uh, from now. Um, if you try to click on the link immediately, it takes a couple minutes for YouTube to, I don't know, do whatever it is YouTube does. But say within 20 minutes, you'll be able to play this video type thing. So if you need that playing for the repeating decimal ones, do your homework. By all means, do that. If you have any specific questions, send me a chat or email. Uh, but that's all I had for you guys. Any questions? You guys doing okay? Everybody's alive? Doing well? Haley, now I understood why you were uh, in the 8th uh, grade class, or the 7th grade class, and that's because I clicked the wrong button for record. I actually recorded uh, two Algebra 1 lessons rather than... I clicked the button for uh, the Algebra 1 link, so it's okay. The uh, 7th graders will figure it out. Uh, that's it. That's all I had for you guys. Have a wonderful day, and I will see you guys tomorrow. Same time, same bat channel.